Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography and today I am answering a question from a viewer. So somebody wanted to know, is there a way to rate and sort your images in Lightroom and then use Capture One for editing? So basically if you're starting out with Capture One and you're still not really comfortable with it and you want to kind of do some of your work in Lightroom and some of your work in Capture One, this is kind of a, one way you could go about it or if you're still not fully comfortable with Capture One, you might want to do this. Or for example, say you're a Fuji shooter and you still have a fairly big um, Lightroom library and you just want to use Capture One for say, working with your Fuji images, if, say if you shoot with multiple cameras or something. Um, yeah, so there's lots of different reasons why you might want to use do this. So if you do, there's obviously there's many different ways you can go about it. But what I'm going to show you now is my workflow for working um, between both applications. So this kind of works on a per project basis if you want to share a project between Capture One and Lightroom. So let me start by switching over to Lightroom here. So here I have a project that I was working on in Lightroom and I have already imported my images and I've already gone through and rated them. So I've given some five stars and so on. So uh, if I go up here now and I just go sort by five stars, you can see all my five star images. Um, so basically this was a project for, it was a photo essay for my Streets of Dublin website. I'm just gonna use this as an example. Um, say I, whatever, for whatever reason, I wanted to edit these in Capture One. Um, rather than having to go through and then kind of find which ones I wanted, I'd already marked and starred uh, again in Capture One and start from scratch. There's a way you can actually kind of share projects between the two and it's actually pretty simple. So the first thing you want to do is in Lightroom, go to the catalog settings and make sure the option to automatically write changes to XMP is turned on. Now this, as far as I know, is on by default. Um, at least it used to be. So in case they've changed that, just make sure this is turned on. Um, so what that does is it writes all the metadata to XMP sidecar files. So the other option is to select all your images and then go metadata and save metadata to files. So what this will do is this basically does the same thing. If you have the option to write automatically on, it will be constantly doing it in the background or you can do it this way and do it manually. Um, it used to be a case that having it on would slow Lightroom down a bit, but that's not really an issue anymore. Um, so I just leave it on. Okay, so once you've done that, what the next thing you want to do is find this find this in the Finder, um, or if you're on Windows, Windows Explorer. So I'm going to right click on any of the files and just go Show in Finder. So this will now open the folder in the Finder, and again on Windows you'd be Windows Explorer. So what I want to do, I'm going to import the whole folder. I'm not going to try and find the individual files here. So. Uh, you can, on the Mac, just drag from up here. So if you click and hold on this for a second and drag this down, so onto the dock, I'm gonna find Capture One and just drag it here. So this is now gonna import the whole thing. So just let it scan for a second. Okay, so there's all the images from the folder. Um, destination, this is important in the import window. You want to set that to current location. So basically this, both Lightroom and Capture One are gonna be referencing the same files because we don't want to create duplicates here. We don't want to end up with lots of unnecessary um, duplicated files. Okay, so that's all fine. I'm gonna leave that on because I'm gonna use that anyway. And then I'm just gonna go import all. So this will now start importing these. And as you can see, just here from the side, the images that I have starred remain starred. Okay, so that's everything imported now. It's just gonna go and create the previews. So um, just while this is doing this, one of the questions I get asked a lot is why does Capture One take so long to generate previews? Well, the reason is unlike Lightroom, um, Capture One's previews are not JPEGs and they're actually kind of more like Lightroom's smart previews. So you can actually work with um, the images missing and you can still work with your images, you can recover highlights and everything like that. So they're actually kind of, it, they behave very similar to Lightroom's smart previews. Um, and that's why they take a bit longer to generate and that's why the preview size is a bit larger. You don't actually have to wait with this, you can actually continue on. So let's actually just do that. So you can just close this window as well, you don't need that open. So I'm gonna to go to the library tab here in Capture One and our import is already selected here. So if I scroll down, 
you can see we have our rating. So we want to select just the five stars. So here's all the five star images. And the other thing we want to do is we don't want to, because this is imported both RAW and JPEG, um, depending on what you shot, I like to shoot RAW and JPEG pairs, but some people may prefer to just shoot RAW, that's fine. Um, and I'm just going to hold down the command key here, so we're selecting RAW as well. So this, now I'm viewing just five star images and RAW images. Okay, so now I can go through and do whatever edits I want. So let me just pick an image here. And let's not pick that one. Let's find something nice. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so let me just pick a shot to work on. So I'm just going to use this one. So there's only a few. There's not much to adjust here. So our exposure is a little bit bright. So we go to our exposure panel and just knock this down a smidgen. And we we'll drop. Let's bring the whites down to stop the clipping a bit. And we can do something like say vignette. Okay and maybe just a bit of contrast. Okay, so now I'm obviously, I'm not doing anything overly complicated here, but again, this is just demonstrating the process. So um, it's not about what I'm doing here. It's just, I'm just demonstrating the process and you can do whatever edits you want. You could do anything kind of complex or whatever you needed to do. Um, this is just a quick demonstration. Okay, so once you've edited your images and say, let's just pretend I've edited lots of images um, and you want to bring them back into Lightroom. Um, so this is how I would go about doing it. Now there's lots of different ways you could do it. You could just export them and manually re-import them. But the way I would do it is I would set up a process recipe that exports a TIFF back into the same folder. So let me show you what to do. So if we go to our process recipes, tool tab here it so says the little cog because the output tool tab sorry and process recipes up here and then we're going to create a new process recipe and we'll just call this send to Lightroom okay you can call it whatever you want okay so in the process recipe basic we want format tiff uncompressed everything else here is kind of the same uh, I'm gonna set it to 16 bit now you don't have to do this. You could use a JPEG, you could use 8-bit if you have limited um, file space. Whatever suits your workflow. I'm using TIFF and 16 because I want to preserve the maximum. Um, I'm going to use zip compression just so we're saving a little bit of file space. Okay, so the next thing we want to click on the file tab. And this is really important. Here on root folder, you want to set this to image folder. So what this will do is this will export it back into the same folder that we have we are working from. And that's very important for the reason that you will see in a minute. <laughs> okay, so once that's basically it, uh, all the rest of the stuff you can leave at the defaults. Um, da -da -da, you probably want to leave that on. Uh, you can just change some of the metadata there uh, if you want, and we don't want a watermark. So that's all fine. So with that selected, and make sure you don't have any other process recipes selected. You can just hit the process button. Um, if you've edited lots of images, select them all first and then hit the process button. So like so, and then this will just render as the full res image. Okay, so that's rendered that out. So now I can hop back over to Lightroom, like so. And then here in the folders tab, I can just go synchronize folder, import new, I go synchronize and we want to show the import dialog box. You can actually turn this off if you want, but this is kind of handy to leave it on. So I'm going to synchronize and this will show you what we're bringing back in. So here you can see is the TIFFs edited. Um, so again, just set this back to none. You can actually turn this off, but I always recommend at least the first time you do it, showing the import dialog box because you might have developed settings set and you don't want to do that because you're bringing in TIFFs. So import and now if we go back to our folder you can see sorry here's the tiff so there's the tiff from capture one and there's our raw file so yeah so again i know i'm probably going to get comments on this oh why would you need to do this again everybody has their own different ways of working and particularly if you're just starting out with capture one you have a large lightroom library rather than trying to import everything over and go through everything again this can be a handy way of just transitioning over and again you might uh, have a large lightroom library and you might only want to use capture one now and again um so there's lots of different reasons that this might be something that you want to do and for me this is kind of the best workflow because it's 
is the minimal amount of duplicating of files and it's fairly straightforward. Okay, so I hope you have found this useful. If you have, please like, share and subscribe and don't forget to check out my Patreon channel and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.